mode. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Adam Market's live webinar. Nenet and myself are going to take a look at reading market emotions by looking at price action signals. Uh, if you're on Twitter, uh, you can follow us at Admiral Markets and at Chris Worsick and at Toronto FX. Before we dive into today's topic, though, be aware that uh, this webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more details. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange in global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, tonight, both Nanet and myself, Chris, are going to host this webinar at Admiral Markets. We're excited that you're here and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, basically, the emotional status, why is the market moving as it is? Well, it has a lot to do with the fact that there's a market psychology, that traders, in fact, have their own psychology that make up some kind of, of the market psychology, and uh, that's basically the driver behind price. Now, of course, there are a lot of fundamental technical reasons for price to, to move as it does, interest rates, uh, trade balances, uh, the growth of the economy and the inflation perspectives, etc., uh, monetary and fiscal policies. Uh, but ultimately, it's all about the traders and the market's reactions to those developments. So the developments, of course, are driving it, but ultimately it's us traders uh, that perceive the news, that, that analyze the news and make judgments on that. So all those developments are, are facts, are, are out there, but still there's judgment, still there's perceptions and uh, analysis, how to, to view those facts. So that's why basically the market psychology is so important. Uh, the markets are not rational, and this is, or at least this is our opinion. And a lot of people agree with, with us, a lot of people have the same opinion. There are some out there that think the markets are rational, all right, and, and the markets are, are, let's say, perfect. Uh, in our opinion, that is not the case. Uh, if that would be so, if the markets would be perfect, uh, there would be no opportunities to, to trade. Um, but we disagree because we think that the markets are overreacting. In fact, that they're emotional. They go further than, um, let's say, the, the fair value would be or the, the, the value that is explainable. And as the markets overreact, that's for traders the opportunity to capitalize on that, all right? And uh, that's basically what we, what we think is the opportunity for traders. That's why we have to also keep an eye on our own psychology, that we're not you know, going along with the uh, market moves that uh, do not make sense. Because if we lose our, if we don't keep sight of our own emotions, then we might become emotional trader and we might actually be losing our edge. Uh, as, as the market is emotional, we are emotional, so we won't be able to capitalize on those movements. All right, so let me know if that makes sense uh, or not through the chat, of course, at, at any time. So, uh, price action is a reflection of that, right? It's difficult to explain, of course, how price can move up so much and so much down. Uh, from, my, from our perspective, it is no doubt that the market is emotional, and there is a lot of information out there. It's, it's at this moment in time, at least, not possible to really think that uh, there's a perfect kind of equilibrium out there at any point, right? Maybe in the future, maybe, I don't know, 100 years from now, things will be different as uh, either humans become more capable of, you know, handling more information in a, in a larger uh, quantities or or maybe we have the help of artificial intelligences that support our decision making and we become more rational I don't know how things will develop in the future and that could change hundred years from now who knows but for the moment right uh, we, we have plenty of trading opportunities as the market is irrational all right so as basically we were saying there's kind of layers of psychology it's not only what are the what are the numbers saying? What are the stats saying about the various economies and 
thought and policies, fiscal and monetary policies. It's not only what I think or you think about these trends, but what do obviously other investors think about that, right? So, you know, it's not only important that I think that the euro dollar would, would go down, but ultimately I'm not the one uh, who's the only one who's participating. There's a huge market out there. Ultimately, it's even a layer deeper. What do other investors think? Other investors see the market, right? So think about it for a second. It's, it's, it's something that um, goes one layer deeper, right? And it's, it's basically a level of psychology where we start to think not only what does John think about the market or, uh, or Lily think about the market, right? But what do those investors think the general market thinks, right? So that's kind of how deep you can go. Now, Nenet and I keep it simple. <laughs> we uh, look at technical analysis for those answers and derive conclusions from, from there because uh, looking at other things could get quite complicated and quite intense. So that's why uh, today I wanted to talk a bit about patterns. First of all, wave patterns, elite wave analysis quickly. Um, and for those who are not interested in waves, then about other patterns and how you can use those patterns to understand the market psychology uh, in a better and easier fashion. So first of all, the waves. So there are five waves that have a different kind of mentality, a different state of mind uh, at each phase, at, e at each point. Basically, uh, the five wave sequence is a trend direction. It is a strong push in one direction uh, where one, three, and five are going with the trend and two, four are correcting against the trend. Uh, basically, these, the waves in those waves could be subdivided yet again in five and, and, and five and three waves. So you see for wave one here, you see a five wave formation uh, within that wave one and within two, you see three waves, right? So you have five, three, five, three, five within the one, two, three, four, five. Right? So you can subdivide that and you can do that again uh, as the image below shows, the 21, 13, 21, 13, 21. So these waves kind of are riding on the market psychology. The market psychology uh, was uh, identified uh, by Mr. Elliott uh, and uh, back 100 years ago, approximately in the 1930s. And it states that Wave one is the very first kind of turning spot. It is where basically a new trend is showing its its potential. First of all, by building five waves, all right, to the upside. In this case, uh, the previous trend was down, so it's not going to be as excited. It's not going to be as quick, perhaps I should say, to the upside uh, because the the trend was still down. That's why the wave two pullback. The psychology of the wave two is that the trend is still down. And let's say the, the herd investors are still trading bearishly, mostly, all right? They could get trapped because what happens is that the smart investors are already recognizing the trend change, either after wave one or somewhere in wave one, because there's divergence present and uh, there could be some other factors that, that show that a turnaround is possible. So they're already either exiting shorts or slowly but surely positioning themselves to the upside, right? Uh, let's say the... The traders that are not aware of that are, are shorting, could get stuck in shorts there, or could get stuck in shorts here as wave two makes a bottom. Instead of going along, they're, they're shorting in the market. So that's still the old trend, but after divergence is present, after five waves are up or present, and other patterns that we can use, uh, the wave analyst, the wave uh, trader can recognize the market emotions and actually be positioned to the, to the correct uh, direction, which is counter trend at this point still, right? Eventually, of course, price breaks through the trend, resistance trend line starts to make an uptrend, that's in wave three. That's when it becomes clear for the rest of the market that a, a trend is up, and uh, then you can see a very strong push, a continuous push, continuous candles pushing higher and higher. This is momentum, quick momentum uh, without pauses. And that's a wave three. It's the most powerful. It's the strongest push of a new trend. It's where the market is really, really um, very bullish or very, very bearish. 
Now, wave four is where you get a mild correction, <clears throat> often a shallow correction, perhaps to the 23 or 38.2 fib. Market goes sideways. This could take quite long, these correction patterns. Now, the wave three, to be honest, is the most fun, right? Uh, it's the most impulsive. It's the quickest price speed. But it's also, unfortunately, one of the quickest parts. So it could last long, but compared to corrective waves like four and two or uh, wave one and five, it's often the, the shortest, unfortunately. For us traders, that is just the reality. So that's why it's always good to keep an eye on multiple instruments and try to see where a wave three has the most chance of developing. Because if you only keep an eye on one currency pair or one instrument, well, Waves three, they do occur, but they are more rare than other waves. So you would be a bit more limited in, uh, in your trading opportunities. Waves four are a bit annoying to trade because it's going to be choppy. It's going to be consolidation territory. It's possible to trade it, but just be aware of those fibs and the fact that price could bounce at those fibs for continuation. You don't want to put the, the stop loss within that wave four pattern because you could get really chopped. Uh, your account could get whipsawed in, in such a wave as the market goes sideways. So that's really good to be aware of this because a lot of losses could occur in those wave twos and waves one and two as well, by the way, but in a different manner then you're trading, traders are trading against the, uh, with the old trend, wave four probably with the new trend, but just get whipsawed. Wave five is one where you want to be cautious. It's the last push that could still be a decent run, but it also could be a short run because there's often divergence. So you don't want to enter too late uh, because you run the risk of, uh, of the trend just really stopping at that point. Then you get the correction, ABC. Uh, a takes longer uh, to develop often enough. I mean, you know, bubbles or reversals do take sometimes longer than we expect, than traders expect and the market expects. Look at the bubble on the real estate market in the US 2008. There were people out there uh, actually waiting for the bubble to, to burst and it still didn't happen, still didn't happen. And uh, so that that's typical. It's, it seems like the market almost keeps its head in the sand for a while until really things are overly obvious and then, well, things can pick up quite fast, in fact, and the reversal then starts to uh, develop quickly. And a wave, if the reversal uh, is not as clear perhaps, wave Bs can be very, very tricky because it's still with the trend actually, the upside, but it's, it's a trap. Traders go long, but it's actually still part of the correction to the downside. So that's something, uh, it, you know, if you can filter out those longs within wave B, uh, any system will do a lot better already if you can avoid at least some of those losses within a wave B correction. And the wave C is then part of that bigger correction to the downside. Here too you have, of course, internal subdivisions again within that ABC. So that's a quick uh, idea about the psychology at the various phases of a market stage, right? And knowing those psychologies behind these market phases will give you an idea what you could expect from price and how it behaves. So for instance, when we look at different patterns, all patterns are very valuable when looking at the psychology of the market. Whether they are chart patterns, bull flags are very typical for wave four, right? Uh, momentum is very typical for wave three, uh, and also wave one or wave A or C. That's when price moves fast, right? Chart patterns will be very typical for an ABC zigzag or an ABC zigzag within wave two or uh, the wave four, right? Or even, of course, within a wave one and three, you will again have subdivisions of wave two and four. So you, with even within the wave three, you will have parts where there will be bull flags. Look at the dollar yen recently, right? Had, a, had some corrections that were price paused, made some triangles, contracting triangles, then continued to break to the upside and continued with the trend. So those were uh, moments where on the lower time frame price paused and those were corrections within the larger upside momentum on the daily chart. All right, so you can, you can use patterns to, to help identify the, the psychology and 
you know, understand kind of the the sentiment that's going on at the moment. Uh, Ilya is asking, can I go back to the last two slides? So, wait, that's the other way around. Uh, this one first, right? All right, I don't know if that's long enough. So, the five waves here, once again, and then the ABC, right? Was that fast enough? Or was that long enough? Sorry. The first few, and uh, here we go. This is the first one. All right, and then here we have the second one. And then we had the third, I already showed you. And then the fourth. All right. All right, there we go. Good. Uh, so Fibonacci levels, of course, Fibonacci patterns, very important as well uh, within the psychology of the market. As price basically makes a wave one, two, where will wave two end? What's well, typically a deep fib, like a 61.8 fib? or 78.6 fit, right? The same one I already explained after wave three, what does a wave four do? Well, it stops at the shallow fit, like a 38.2 fit often. So really the fibs and waves go very neatly hand in hand. Uh, where's the target? Well, when you have a wave one and two, often the wave three is deep, it could go to a 261.8 fib, right? At least it should go to 161.8 and further. Because anything above, further than the 161.8 is probably wave three. If it stays within the 100 to 161.8 region, then it could be, it's probably not a wave three. Or it could also be a wave three, but it could also be a wave C. Uh, the target for a wave five, you could put a fib on the wave three and get a correction to wave four. And the target here could be the minus 272 target. The minus 0.272 target for instance, right? So they go very neatly hand in hand. But very important, and I think that um, now that we'll probably talk about that a bit more, is candle and candlesticks, right? That is an ultimate kind of information that we get from the market, what is basically happening uh, right now, right here. When we have, for instance, wave three, what we will see? We'll see strong candles going to the upside, showing higher highs and higher lows, reasonable big candles at times. If we see correction candles, they'll be small, and then sooner or later, probably within five to six candles, we'll see upside candles again, right? This is typical for wave three, or, or at least any momentum, in fact, right? Like here, this is momentum two. So the candles themselves will be recognized or characterized by relatively large size candles, closes often near the high in this case, uh, and uh, we'll have higher highs within five, six candles. So, and the opposite candles are smaller, not that many, minority, <clears throat> that's typical for momentum. And candlestick patterns, well, we'll see often candlestick patterns when, when this upset starts, we should see some bullish engulfing twins here, for instance, right? That could be the signal of, of the start of that upside or any bullish pattern. Whereas a candlestick, a big pin bar here at the top could indicate the exhaustion of this upside, could indicate that uh, the correction might start and we might see a bull flag like this develop, right? That basically pin bar could be the first signal of such a correction. So this is how candlestick patterns <clears throat> are often the start and end of momentum and correction. For instance, if we have such a bear flag, if we continue with the bear flag example like this, right, right here engulfing twins could indicate the end of that correction and the start of the last wave five push up to the upside. So this is how all these patterns kind of could be aligned to understand the market structure, to understand, okay, we have waves, we have 
fibs that indicate the key levels. Uh, we have within those momentum and corrections, we have chart patterns and time patterns and candlestick patterns and candles. And time patterns is the only one I didn't talk about, but basically what I mean with that is that, for instance, Netet has this master candle breakout, right? For instance. So that's a time element. There have to be a certain number of candles after that that do not break the higher low. So that becomes a master candle. So the breakout uh, of that candle would then indicate the, the breakout, right? Very simple. So that's a, a time pattern as well. Or it could be also a candlestick pattern perhaps, but you know, it's, it is an example. I use five to six candle rule as well. So for instance, here, five to six candles not breaking this low means that this correction is most likely over. That's a time pattern as well, indicating uh, the end of a, a correction. So let's take a look at some, I know I talked a bit longer than I wanted to here on this slide, so let's move on. And let's take a look at uh, the euro dollar. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, But somehow I have some indicator that I'm not sure. One second, folks. Ah, okay, let's hope it doesn't bother me too much. There's some indicator that uh, is, is annoying me. But anyhow, so let's take a look at this. Uh, I don't know. We can we can start on any. That's it. Start on the daily chart. Let me quickly, there's some indicator here. Ah, good. I know which one. Good, I got rid of it. So, uh, euro dollar. Uh, basically, so when we look at these these candles, right, as they daily candles, this is an obvious reversal candle, big wick, strong close near the low. So that's already an indication that this candlestick pattern will start a bearish drive, a bearish momentum. And all these candles confirm that. Confirm that, confirm that, confirm that. The first time we have to be worried is probably the first two bullish candles or five to six candles not breaking this low, which happened somewhere here, right? And indeed, we got a bigger correction like that. But then again, a candlestick pattern here that indicated more downside probably to occur. So just looking at these candles, we can understand that the momentum is down, uh, that uh, this is uh, a downtrend bearish uh, wave, either it's you know, beginning of a, of a downtrend, this is, I thought, a wave one and that we were expecting a wave two. All right, that's in that indeed what happened. So price made a wave two correction up to close to the 50 fib and uh, turned at that fib for more downside. So this is basically already showing you momentum, correction, reversal at the fibs, and uh, again, a continuation lower. Now, if we look at lower time frames, we'll be able, within that, you'll see some, some patterns, right? For instance, here. Let's start with the, here. This is where it started. So you see some flags here, like this. These are all bear flags. These are corrective chart patterns, uh, an ABC zigzag, like this, within basically the downtrend that we see on the daily chart, right? So on a four hour chart, one hour chart, when we see there's momentum, on one particular time frame, such as this daily chart, we can look in to lower time frames and look for chart patterns. And we can look for not only chart patterns to break, but even like this, candlestick patterns within the corrections, right? ABC zigzag finishes engulfing twin right there, and the downtrend continues like this again. Um, you could, we could use time patterns, for instance, as well here. Uh, five to six candles, not breaking this low. There's maybe divergence between these bottoms, if there is. So that gives us a warning that, hey, this is maybe not part of the downtrend, but this is actually a bigger correction, right? Right here, this part. Divergence, maybe a head and shoulders pattern, chart pattern, reversal pattern. Five to six candles, not breaking this, this low. We have wicks here and pin bars indicating support. So there's a potential for a reversal right there and a bigger correction to the upside. 
Yes, it's the same indeed. So uh, here are five to six candles. Then we have a correction, but we know that the trend is still down. So this correction might go back to resistance. So if we have five to six candles not breaking this high with engulfing twins, right, you get downside. So I'm giving you just a few examples. Obviously, this is discretionary trading, and that is not easy for those that are starting. You know, wave analysis takes time to to use. But I just, I'm, you know, this is too short of a webinar to to give you all kind of info on, on all these things. But I wanted to basically give you two messages that the market is emotional, that we can use patterns to understand the market structure and find opportunities to uh, capitalize on that emotional status. And those patterns could be diverse. Which ones you choose is up to you, obviously. But it is possible to, to combine them and spot, find the spots where there's a, a, you know, a good probability that the market will go our, our way. And using a combination of wave patterns, flip patterns, time patterns, chart patterns, candlestick patterns, right, um, will give you, I think, a great understanding of the market structure and you'll be able to uh, really make good discretionary analysis. Now, that's the analysis. Uh, there's still, of course, the entry, uh, the trade management, money management, risk management, trade psychology. Obviously, we, we don't discuss all of these things in one webinar. Uh, Nenet has, for instance, uh, talks about the, uh, the master candle technique, for instance. Uh, I have a live uh, in his or his setups on Monday, for instance, right? Those are not only analysis, but actual uh, trade entries. I talk about uh, that on Tuesdays and Wednesdays on live trading. Live we're back uh, on January 4th on Tuesday with that. Uh, but this is, I just wanted to now focus on analysis only. And this is uh, one of my favorite ways of analyzing the market. It is It does take some time maybe to, to practice, but I think you really will get a, a very uh, refined kind of feeling for uh, what the market can do and also really recognize what is most the most likely path of least resistance because often enough I think you'll see uh, price or traders sorry um, not really fully grasping I think what's going on for instance dollar yen uh, shorts uh, in here for instance really didn't grasp I think what was going on strong momentum right and this is just a correction. Of course, we have to keep an eye on support too. If, it, if, if price breaks through support, well, then you want to be on your toes, of course. But as long as it's in this triangle, uh, stays above support, stays above this, this moving average, you know, things are good to go on the upside here on, on the dollar yen. And it has been keeping going up, as you can see. So looking, you know, if, if you would look at momentum, the momentum here on this dollar yen, for instance. Uh, I think that it will become clear that uh, this is this is a strong wave, and that it would be careful or it would be good to be careful with taking reversal trades on this, right? Um, and that's one thing. If you have a strong push, you will be more, I think, capable of understanding when there's the right moment of a reversal trade or when is it good to still keep looking for it with the trend trade because you know that the wave four or five is still pending or uh, if you know that the wave five double divergence has occurred that you know this could happen right then you won't be buying in here for instance i think that with this if you start obviously you need to practice this on the demo and or or, or you could use your system still but add a little bit of this knowledge to filtering maybe some setups that don't make, you know, you could uh, you could skip and avoid uh, because you, you use the discretion, you use a filter to say, I, I my system says that this is a buy, but I can see that this is a wave B, or I think there's a good chance that this is a wave B, and I'll skip this. So you can use it in this way too. Or I see that the trend is down, but there's divergence and there are five waves up, after that so it looks like the trend is changing I think it will be guarding you uh, making you a bit more 
balanced in both with the trend trades but also reversal trades. I have a feeling that traders are either you know too much focus on reversals or or a bit naive in reversals, right? So I think this gives you the balance to find this to find a right uh, understanding of of what is more likely uh, within this, the wave structure within the market structure. For instance, with the euro dollar at the moment, uh, to to uh, leave with uh, to to make it a, an ending here for for my part at least, and then it will continue. Uh, with the euro dollar, this is corrective at the moment, right? This is clearly a corrective channel. This is probably a bigger correction like this. So within this the daily chart, it's still a downtrend at this moment. Unless there are two bullish candles here. To, if today is a doji, it should still be bearish. If today ends up bullish, I might be a bit cautious of the downside. But for the moment, this is this is a corrective pattern. And especially if there is a big wick here, occurring uh, some bearish candle right there then I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow this correction breaks and we see a break pullback continuation to the downside that could happen uh, as this correction gets completed right this is clearly uh, in my opinion still a downtrend and uh, there's no divergence between these bottoms so this should be a correction still for, for more downside uh, now that could change if for me, it's an important level <clears throat> to reckon with. Let's see. Uh, one second, folks. Let me go to this hourly. Yeah, if price breaks through this, I would say through 105, 105.25, right? then it is pulling back a lot deeper than I uh, would expect. I mean, it topped out today at 105, 104, 90, yeah, just at 105, right? So uh, that is the max retracement I would expect. 105.25 is probably the very, very max, right? So if it goes above that, that's when I think the bearish trend uh, is invalidated in a way. Well, not totally invalidated, but at least the pullback is deeper than that makes sense from my current analysis. So that's when I would become careful. And the confirmation that this is a correction, in my opinion, is if price breaks below the pivot point again and breaks below this uh, uh, this correction, I would like to see a strong bearish candle below it like this. That should happen probably tomorrow, right? Because now the market is closed in London. There could be maybe some movement in New York. But ultimately, the more, more most movement will be tomorrow morning in London again, under your dollar at least, right? Because it's a, it's not a, a pair that's known to move a lot in Asian session. So when it does that to, tomorrow morning, it breaks through the pivot and maybe hooks back a bit. Continuation. That would be the confirmation I'm looking for uh, on the under your dollar. All right, then this chart pattern should be finished. Uh, but if anyone looked for a candlestick pattern at resistance at 105, then this was a good one two hours ago, for instance. This was uh, a good signal that most likely ended uh, the corrective channel here. And uh, price is moving lower now. So that's, uh, yeah, some insights from my side, how I try to interpret the psychology of the market and all of the investors that uh, are participating, how I try to uh, gain more understanding, what's you know what kind of sentiment is behind uh, all of this these candles and then price actions, and uh, now I'm going to hand it over to to Nenet. Thank you, Chris. Uh, a lovely introduction, really, to price uh, and emotions. Uh, here I will, guys, uh, let, let you uh, and uh, I will let you to decide uh, on your own. Uh, what do you think, really? What is the what is the holy grail of forex trading? And now, because most of you are not so new, uh, you probably know that uh, holy grail exists. Okay, it exists, it's alive, and it serves as well, right? So uh, the main the main concept and absolutely the most important thing in forex trading and the holy grail 
of forex trading is money management. Point. Whoever tells you differently, whoever tells you differently, uh, is wrong. Okay. Uh, of course, guys, uh, we always seems to have, uh, well, I mean, most of the time, at least 80 to 90 percent, our entries are pretty much accurate, right? But the problem is, what if we start to overtrade if, uh, if actually we start to win? So by continuously winning, we might be a little bit overconfident. The main concept in trading is to learn how to trade by controlling your emotions. So when you master uh, techniques, different techniques for entries, for exits, price action, whatever you prefer, then you need to master your own emotions. But the problem is, what if we become euphoric? Then there is no mastery. If we become euphoric, all our good decisions that we have made definitely will come but it, they will they will become barren because all of our profits can easily be lost if we start to emotionally trade in trading there is no room for emotions but the good thing is emotions of traders are reflected on price so what I'm implying here you as a trader should not have and should not be emotional I know it's it's maybe the hardest thing to master but you should be able to read other traders emotions trading is not a game of poker poker right and because of that, you cannot see other traders' faces. You cannot read the emotions from their faces. The only thing where you can read the emotions in the market is price action. Okay? Because emotions of other traders reflect on the price. And you want to exploit First of all, we have market emotions and we also have market bias by MT4 Supreme. This is something different that I will also mention. Candlestick emotions are very important, guys. If, you were, if you've been following my price action trading school, you know that I always mention historical versus now moment buyers and sellers. Also, when I do the analysis for you, for example, today's Euro GBP analysis, I also watched historical price action on Euro GBP currency, par, currency pair. So the main thing is those things tell me a lot, really, especially when I see, in our moment, when I see candlesticks. For example, if we see a speeding top candlestick, simply it means the indecision. So traders are usually, they usually don't know what to do when they see an indecisive candle. The concept is pretty much simple. If you see the indecision in uptrend and daily candle closes with candle like this, if you are not a good price action analyst and you still don't know much about price action, the easiest for you would be to actually trade the break of high or low. Because if high is breaking, probably the uptrend will continue. If low is break, broken, then what could happen is retracement, right? In a trend, or maybe retracement will turn into a reversal. So we will have a trend change. But usually what traders do is, if they are really, if they cannot be bothered with analysis and all of those intraday trading, then they should put some pending orders above or below daily, high, low, 
should daily close with spinning top. The color of a spinning top is not that important unless it is actually found at very top or bottom. If we see a spinning top at the top, well, I would suggest that you wait for a breakout in either direction. If you, sp if you see a spinning top bearish at the top, then probably next day will be bearish, so you might start considering taking short trend setups and waiting for that breakout setup to the downside when it happens. Because usually a spinning top at the top, at the resistance, is the first sign of a possible of a possible retracement. Because guys, you know that trend always uh, I will I will try to explain it as precise as, as it can be. Trend always has its main movement, call it wave, call it whatever you want, and retracement. I call it trust and pullback. So this is trust, this is pullback. When you have a zigzag, it will always be a trust and a pullback. But generally, we can see the trend. Now, if you see a spinning top at the bottom here, at the top, then probably market will start to retrace. Why do I call it a retracement? Because retracement is the first sign of a possible reversal. Before retracement happens, there is no reversal. So here, retracement, retracement, and then finally reversal. So it might happen indeed. Also, indecision candles are long leg doji, gravestone doji, dragonfly, four price doji, something similar to this. All of these candles are actually indecision candles. Yes, I was talking about trust, pullback, trust, and pullback. So this is trust, this is pullback. This is trust, this is pullback. If we see a spinning, let me repeat again, if we see a spinning top at the top, at resistance, we might probably, I would, I would personally uh, look for uh, counter trend entry opportunities because the market is already at the top, so uh, this daily close, let's say this is daily close, really tells me that there will be even more movement to, uh, the, uh, to the downside. So I would take short positions, and also at the break of daily low, I would scale in, or I would exploit a simple breakout trade. So this, th this happens usually in uptrend. But for example, in downtrend, you will also have trust, pull back, trust, pull back, trust, and here, guys, you might see a spinning, a spinning uh, top that is bullish. If it happens, then probably market will make a U-turn, and if it breaks daily high, indicated by bullish spinning top at the bottom, there is a chance for a breakout trade in upside direction. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it might happen. That is the earliest cue, and that actually reflects that market emotions actually changed. Sentiment has changed. For example, I've been really bearish on Euro dollar all this week, and we could see really nice rejections first from POC at 1.0410, then it was like 0, uh, 0, 04, 20, 30, and suddenly the spike uh, price spiked above my very, very important level in my opinion, very poor level, it's 1.0470. And then what happened is, you see what is happening now. Price already spiked below 1.0470. And I told you that if we see a weekly close below 1.0470, 1 it could be a big possibility that the market will proceed to lower levels in New Year. But it should happen after New Year because really now there will be a lot of profit taking because of holidays, so we might see some upside price action just because of profit taking. Uh, definitely, 
I'm also short. You you see that I'm really short on euro dollar, also euro GBP. So for me, this, this is clear downtrend. The only thing what I'm waiting for is now at this point to see that weekly close. But definitely, guys, you should have been selling euro dollar on rallies because you you really would have made nice profits. Not that big because there is not a big range on euro dollar, but still good. Also, Marubosu strong pressure candles will tell you a lot about market emotions. When you see Marubosu candle at support, at support, well then, guys, what you expect is strong upside movement, probably a continuation. How we trade Marubozu candles is by high volatility trading, okay, and then to the upside. Ilya is saying, I'm very sad that you recommended sell limit on Euro dollar. It wasn't rich yet. Yes, Ilya, but do you for, uh, have you forgot that I also gave you a buy limit order that gave you huge amounts of pips. If you were following my long opportunity on euro dollar, well then you would have been in a nice profit. Just take a look at my pre previous webinar and you will see that I recommended also long trading opportunities, okay? And uh, that was very, very good. For example, a tweet from a trader today. I will show you now. Okay, here you see a tweet, and this was buy position 1.0360. If you follow it, you see what was the, the TP 100 pips to the upside with only 30 pips stop loss. Well, I mean, I know that most traders are not that comfortable are not very comfortable by taking counter trend opportunities. But guys, sometimes, you know, sometimes we definitely need to try to trade something differently. Really, something that is not very conventional. Because you know what I do? If I miss one setup, then I usually I usually take other setup. So if I missed my positional trade, I would go with counter trend trade. That is why I always say take one position only. It's much better to, I mean, don't chase the price. If you see that market is at support, guys, well then take the other opportunity. Try to counter trend it. Also, one more thing, Marubozu is very important candle. Because, guys, these are high volatility candles. Wait for retracement. Don't enter immediately. I mean, sometimes market can really give you white soldiers or, da or black crowds. It doesn't matter. Just the opposite direction. But you will miss the setup. If you see that market is really having a strong momentum to the upside, it means that market sentiment, emotion, has changed. So you could, it's a bit risky to take along from here. But if you wait for a retracement to 61.8, 78.6, 88.6, I mean the first entry is at 61.8, you know how we trade it, then this is high volatility setup and you just divide your positions on three parts, keeping the risk always fixed and first entry is at 61.8, second is 78.6, Third entry is 88.6 and enjoy the ride. Because mostly Marubozu from support tells you that emotions are strong and sentiment has, has turned bullish. This is the main concept of T89 pattern. You know what T89 is, my, my one of my favorite patterns, the patterns that I personally created. It's, it's not a rocket science, it's EMA89 and pin bar rejection and shortly it's T89 so when you see this it's 
definitely buyer's pressure because if you see this, these candlesticks, those are perfect pin bar rejections. Sentiment changed from bearish to bullish because bearish sentiment was prevailing while candle was like this. And then all these sellers disappeared. All these seller, sellers disappeared and gave us some long opportunities really at like rejection. Same for selling rejection. When this happens, we know that there are selling pressures. Uh, even more affirmative for traders who are patient is so high wave selling and buying. This is so called high wave selling. When you see that market is going to the upside and then at resistance you see a lot of doji candles with big wicks to the upside and also to the downside, usually wicks are bigger than bodies and in my teaching wicks are more important than bodies, then you would instantly know that this is a high wave selling and the sentiment change changed from bullish to bearish. So candlestick really, candlestick and the set of candlesticks can give us a nice, nice cue for market emotions. Hint. High wave buying. Similar to selling, we have a downtrend and then suddenly at support we see one pin bar, doji candle, second pin bar. Usually these weeks should be bigger than bodies, which they are. And you see what happens next. Usually that is a sign that sentiment will change. When you see this small candlestick bodies, small wicks, nothing to see, guys. No volume, no liquidity, nothing. Market is stalling. So what would you do actually is you would wait for a big candle to break and go for a trade. Or you can enter a trigger happy trade make some pips instantly. This is indecision and breakout is expected. And finally, what I also look at candlesticks is these sort of patterns. Ups, downs. You see this up, down, up, down, up, down. It's called a whipsaw and usually this whipsaw can be on massive orders. For example, this also happened on GBP dollar during Brexit. A lot of selling, then buying, selling, buying, as news, news kept coming in. Some pairs that are not very liquid, that are not traded uh, very often, such as uh, Euro, Hungarian, Florinta, uh, they can show you these patterns. Sometimes Euro, Czech, Crown, so not so popular pairs. And what I can, what I have to say, if you see these guys, don't trade it. These are usually massive orders. They can be either uh, orders from banks and profit taking, but those, you see, those, the price action will be like this. Up, down, up, down, up, down with any clear direction. You see these wicks, wicks to the upside, wicks to the downside, body small. There is nothing to trade here. Just get away, literally get away from this market. You don't want to trade this. This is what uh, this candlestick pattern, when I see this, I simply stay out of that market. I don't want to watch it, let alone trade it. And finally, on our uh, annual market uh, MT4 Supreme Edition, you can also see Sentiment Trader. And usually you will see sentiment that are provided by data providers. And here, for example, Euro dollar 52% are long, 48% are short, Euro yen 45% are long, 55% are short, and so on. So also this sentiment trader add-on can tell you about market sentiment at this point. Of course, you don't have to agree with majority. You might be in minority, but still, you can take some cues from the indicator itself. And finally, guys, 
what I will uh, show you now is, for example, Euro GBP, guys, that is rejecting perfectly from my POC. If you followed my analysis today on Euro GBP, well, then you probably know that I was pretty much clear with giving you okay, POC zone and another trade. See here, Euro GBP, POC zone, and it's rejecting now, you see it? Here, and this is it, guys. Price has been rejecting, really. I'm very happy to have this end of day trade. See, from POC zone, it's going down, and we will see if it's able to break these levels here, but so, uh, at this point, it's going down. It's end of day. I mean, the trade happened a little bit late later in the day, but uh, definitely, guys. Okay, if you take weekly here, weekly, you see a lot of selling in the history. Really, a lot of selling. Watch this candle. Watch this candle. Okay, this is completely change of sentiment. Market was a bit. It was bullish here, then started to reject, 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 and finally broke and retested. Very, very same, almost the same level here. See? And today, it, it's happening again. Especially because this can be the early sign for some head and shoulders on weekly. So that's everything uh, I had to show you. So. Yes, as Chris was saying, I was a bit, I was a bit, uh, I, I went a little bit deeper into the explanation of candlestick, but candlestick guys tell me really a lot. They do tell me a lot about sentiment, about emotions, especially guys, because a lot of people who do technical analysis, they simply don't watch historical movement. And I'm telling you again, there is very, very important part of price action trading. And finally, the last question is, can I quickly check pound yen? Pound yen has made some try, tries to reject my zone two days ago, and this was it. This movement was it. It made nice rejection from POC zone here, but it failed to close above L3. So now this is retracement. For upside movement, you need to see close above L4. This, these are weekly pivot points. And above L3 for further upside. It seems to me that, you see, 4 hour is still bullish, guys. It's still bullish. 4 hour on, on uh, pound yen. But if it drops below this level here, it might become bearish again. Okay? But it's been rejected, you see, now because of EMA. Ron is asking, what's the best book about candlestick patterns? Ron, for me, it was Steve Nissen candlesticks. Actually, back in time, when I started to study candlestick patterns, I uh, read, I, was, I watched his uh, DVD about candlesticks. I think also that there is a book called Steve Nissen Candlesticks. So definitely go for it. For me, that's the bread and butter of trading. But uh, of course, I have changed some of his teaching to fit into my price action trading school and analysis. So, but definitely, definitely go for uh, Steve Nissen. Also, Try to read about Bulkovsky patterns. You have a, you have Bulkovsky on Google. Just Google Bulkovsky with W, and you will see a lot of interesting patterns that I also applied in my teaching. For example, Adam and Adam, and uh, diving board V-shape reversals, and so on. Ron, thank you, uh, and thank you, everyone. Uh, I will see you tomorrow, guys, with final analysis before Christmas. For all of you who are celebrating, I wish you a happy Christmas and uh, spend time with your friends and families. 
for all of you who are not celebrating, I wish you happy holidays because market also will be on holiday and enjoy the time, guys. However you see fit, I hope that we will make money in new 2017. But uh, until tomorrow, I wish you a great day and enjoy the pips. Cheers, everyone. Trade safe. Bye for now.